Quick disclaimer, this is a controversial artist and by no means do I stand by any of their words or actions. We're just studying their musical habits and I think that there's a lot to be learnt here. So let's put our politics aside and let's dive into it. Country and hip hop. Not necessarily a fusion that you would immediately marry together, but this artist has done it effortlessly and slightly sneakily. As a result, they've scored the top spots in the Billboard Top 100 chart. So what? A lot of artists have. But this artist released an album of 36 songs. You heard that right, 36. That's at least two albums worth of material. And all 36 songs placed in the top 100 Billboard chart. Five of those were in the top 10. Currently, at the time of recording this, they still hold the number one spot. That's above SZA, Taylor Swift and Drake two months after the release of this new album. They've got 24 million monthly listeners and you probably haven't even heard of them. The artist we're covering today is a country artist known as Morgan Wallen. <laughs> now, if you're from outside the United States, hell, if you're even outside of Nashville, you might not have heard this name. Even The Guardian wrote, His popularity is one of the starkest examples of cultural silos in the US. Loosely, Wallen is to popular music, regional, segmented, massively recognizable to some, and unheard of to others. You either listen to Morgan Wallen or you don't. This is an artist that debuted in 2016 as a back catalogue of just three albums and continues to stay locked into the charts. And you might be asking, well, that's the country charts. No, no, the global charts, the Billboard 100. So let's just jump straight to the chase. What does their music sound like? Well, depending on who you ask, it might vary from pop to country to a new genre that came up on my radar known as bro country. This new genre popped up in the 2010s and it combines hip hop, pop and country music, which is where I think Morgan Wallen's speciality lies. I've analyzed all of Morgan Wallen's songs on this new album and he really does have it down to a science. More than half of his songs fall into the key of F and F sharp major, with 20 of the 36 being within the 140 to 150 BPM range. It's neither a popular key nor BPM for country, but it is for hip hop. If you look at Morgan's relative key, D minor, you find the charts littered with popular hip hop tracks that follow the same rules. Eminem's Lose Yourself, Hotline Bling, and Little Wayne's Lollipop. And the current tempos of trap and drill reflect that 140 to 150 BPM range too. Mr. Wallen will often capture the country listener with familiar sounds, writing a rhythmical repetitive line on the guitar. But in a lot of his most popular songs, the drums are written electronically. Trap sounds, think 808 hi-hats, thin snares, tight kicks, and well-bodied 808 basses. And that's pretty much it for the instrumentation. The songs are simple. There's a few more guitar layers and pads sprinkled in there, but then he starts to layer in the vocals. And the vocals are written simplistically too. The lyrical content remains very vague and open to interpretation. There's themes of alcohol, love, women, and a little bit of religious connotations, which probably speaks to its popularity in certain states. If you're looking to write a song like Morgan Wallen, you've come to the right place. Let's jump into my software of choice, Ableton. All right, today I wanna to cover two songs that don't necessarily fall inside that key signature that I spoke about, but this first one does follow the same BPM. So this is Thinking About Me, which is arguably a little bit more hip hop, which is why it kind of like flagged up on my radar, why I took interest to it. And we're starting with the guitar. I'm gonna turn off the vocal reference, but you can find some educational vocals over at the Patreon. Don't worry if you're new to all of this and your music theory is lacking. So is mine. We're going to jump into the acoustic guitar first, which is super, super simple. I set my scale to E flat minor and drew in this melody line. It's just descending all the way down before jumping up an octave at the end. <laughs> By the way, thank you for all the love on my previous episode. If you haven't watched it yet, cue it up, watch it after this video. I think it's probably one of my favorite episodes that I've made, but I spoke about free acoustic guitars and I forgot to mention that my favorite company, Ample Sound, have a free acoustic guitar as well. So I'll leave that linked in the description because you can recreate tracks like Morgan Wallen's with that free device. But pretty much keeping the acoustic guitar as is, I'm just restricting the width a little bit. And then when we get to the chorus, I'm kind of thinning out that EQ. My next line comes from the Ample Guitar Semi Hollow, which 
which is just more of an electric guitar kind of preset. And I'm drawing in this notation. I'll explain the top and bottom lines in just a sec. So of course we're using the same scale and at the top I've got the instruction that tells this guitar to slide. So when I zoom in on these notes you can see that they're overlapped a little bit and that instruction says from this point on we're going to slide all of those guitar notes. This instruction at the bottom just tells the ample sound guitar to play that first note as a plucked note. The song continues in a very linear fashion meaning that it's just going to grow in excitement. So this guitar is going to be more of a background instrument. You can also see that I use the Ample Guitar L to play the chords of this next part. These guitars are going to sit a little bit differently in this project compared to Morgan Wallen's hit song last night, which is a project we're going to dive into in just a little bit, so make sure you don't go anywhere. This is what they sound like together. So the only thing that I've changed when we go into the chorus section of the song as we layer in more and more sounds is that that first electric guitar sound that you heard becomes a little bit brighter and a little bit quieter in the mix. The guitar that was playing this melody goes onto a new track and I've just filtered a little bit with a different guitar preset. It sounds a little bit more fresh and pops out the mix. The only other guitar that I've added here is this ample slide guitar from the Semi Hollow. This is the Harmonic Ambience preset. It sounds like this. That's just gonna give it an atmospheric feel amongst the other guitars. Super subtle stuff and all very kind of pop music, very safe. But then we get to more of the trap elements. So what have we got here? Well, we've got a really punchy bass and kick. A simple kick drum pattern at the bottom of the screen highlighted there with most kicks landing with the bass, but not all, as you can see with two of the highlighted kicks. And then our bass is gonna be sat on top of that. For the bass, I'm using the Murder 808 slide. Following that, again, we've got a very simple hi-hat line. You can see that I'm using two different velocities to give it that up-down feel down here, pitched a few semitones lower, that triplet fill kind of hi-hat roll. Mix that with a clap and then a snare just for some punch. This should be familiar but very simple. Something that I think subtle but is really, really lovely are these sounds. I've just used the operator to create this sound, as you can see, it's playing this cluster of notes. This has just got a ping pong uh, filtered delay. And then when we go back to the operator, I'm using the arpeggiator on the up down preset at a rate of 30 second notes with a little bit of reverb, so we get this effect. That gives it this really ethereal sound in the mix. And you just want to top things off with a little bit of noise to replace kind of the standard crash cymbal that you would hear. So that's going to have things sit in a more pop music reference than something that you would see in the country landscape. We can now put all of those things together. I'm not going to do it with the vocal reference track I have at the bottom, but if you visit the Patreon, it might be there. As we listen to this, let's talk about the arrangement a little bit. We've spoken about it being built in a linear fashion, meaning that it's going to stack up and get bigger. So here's those extra guitar layers. We're then going to go into the chorus where we introduce those pop elements. So we've got that hip hop trap fill now from the drums and the 808. We probably want to make this bigger as it goes into its second loop. So we're going to bring back that simplistic guitar. We might stack the vocal layers as well. And as we start to come out of the chorus, maybe we have a little bridge before the second verse. We're going to strip things back, take away the kick and the 808, just leave the hi-hat for now and those simplistic acoustic guitar lines. We can then build back in the clap and then we're ready to start a whole new revolution of building that track back up into the chorus.
This actually isn't dissimilar to the arrangement of last night. And whilst this loads got a fun fact for you, did you know that eight of the 20 writers on this album are signed to Big Loud Publishing? That's Morgan Wallen's publishing company. That means that they also have a cut on the album. So when you purchase or stream the album, the record label gets paid twice. And that's why I self-release and I do so with today's sponsor, DistroKid. They have this easy splits tool, which means the artist that I collaborate with gets the exact percentage of splits for the record that we agree on. No labels, no mess. If you want to start releasing music with DistroKid, it couldn't be easier. And I'll even give you 7% off your first year if you use the link in the description below. This project's loaded. Let's dive back into it. Think about it. Okay, so for the purposes of time, I'm not gonna dive into how we build this track, but there is a bonus episode where I will do just that over at the Patreon. And over at the Patreon, you can download the project we just looked at and this project that we're looking at right now as well. The key for this song is F sharp major, and it's the most popular key for this album. And I've pretty much done the same. Stack those layers and we start with a very simplistic guitar line. And I've doubled that up with two other guitars. But this time round, I've put it in a group to control the dynamic range of these guitars together. Then we've got ambient guitars, which is familiar to what we saw the last time. And then we have our trap elements. This time we have the 808 and just a little finger snap. And instead of extra elements, we've got just a double from the guitars at the bottom here. Very simple. So there we go, terribly simple arrangement, right? Morgan Wallen, a brand new name to my ears. Are you similar? Was he on your radar already? What's your thoughts? And let me know who I should take inspiration for future episodes. Is there any other musical anomalies out there? I'd absolutely love to know. Don't forget about the Patreon where you can download stems to both projects that we covered today, as well as a bonus episode on Morgan Wallen. And don't forget that there's a community beat battle going down at Discord right now. At the time of recording this, you have until June the 3rd to submit your beat. And we've got prizes coming from Ample Sound, Excite Audio, and Baby Audio, as well as a chance to release a song with me. So I hope you take part. It's going to be a good stream. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time.